today we're going to be talking about how to find the mass and center of mass of some volume E. And in this particular problem, the volume E is actually the cube where the limits of integration for x are 0 and a. In other words, the interval or the domain on which x is defined is between x equals 0 and x equals a. Same thing here for y. y is going to be greater than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to a. And z is going to be greater than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to a. What this tells us is that the length of each side of the cube is equal to a because we have a minus 0 is just going to give us a. So the cube is a wide by a tall by a long. That's the dimensions of this cube. We've also been given a density function function for the cube, which is defined by this equation, rho of x, y, z. Rho is the Greek letter, looks like a p, but it's rho of x, y, z, that's the density function, and it's equal to x squared plus y squared plus z squared. Well, when we're dealing with a problem like this, and we've already been given the domain or, or the interval for each of our three variables, x, y, and z, and a density function equation, all we need to do is set up our triple integral. So we've got a triple integral here, and this is going to be for the mass. This is to find mass first. We'll find center of mass after that, because we need mass to find center of mass. So mass here is going to be equal to the triple integral. And because we've already been given the interval for each, and each one is 0 to a, we're just going to say 0 to a for each integral. We take our density function and we put that inside the integral, so x squared plus y squared plus z squared. Since we have a cube and we have the same limits of integration for each variable, it doesn't matter the order of integration. So let's just go ahead and do dx dy dz. That's fine. So now we just need to evaluate this integral in order to find mass because we have dx first, or the innermost variable here is dx before y and z. We'll integrate first with respect to x. When we do that, we're going to get 0, 0, and a, a. Here we're going to leave the outer two most integrals. Integrating with respect to x, we get 1 third x cubed plus xy squared plus x z squared. Remember that when we integrate with respect to one variable, we hold the others as constants. So we're treating y and z as constants in this case. And then we're going to be evaluating that on the interval x equals 0 to x equals a. We leave dy and dz here for later. Plugging in a for x, we'll get here 0, 0, a, and a. Plugging in a for x, we're going to get 1 third a cubed plus a y squared plus a z squared. Then we're going to subtract whatever we get when we plug in 0. But of course, plugging in 0 for x, we're going to get a value of 0 for each of these terms. So there's no need to add a, an additional minus 0 term here. We can just leave it at plugging in x equals a. So that's our simplified integral. Now we need to integrate with respect to y. Integrating with respect to y, we'll leave the outermost integral here for z. We'll get 1 third a cubed y plus 1 third a y cubed plus a y z squared. Remember, we treat x and z as constants. We're going to be evaluating this on the interval y equals 0 to y equals a, and we leave dz out there for later. Plugging in y equals a first, our upper limit of integration, what we're going to get then is a here. a cubed times a is a to the fourth, so we get 1 third a to the fourth. Plugging in a for y here, we get a to the third times a is a to the fourth, so plus 1 third a to the fourth. And then for our third term, we'll get a times a, which is a squared, so plus a squared z squared, and we leave here dz. Remember, we don't have to subtract what we get when we plug in y equals 0, because just each of these terms will turn to 0, and there's nothing to subtract. Now we integrate with respect to z, and we'll get 1 third a to the 4 times z plus 1 third a to the 4 times z plus 1 third a squared z cubed. And we evaluate this on the interval z equals 0 to z equals a. Plugging in a for z, we'll get 1 third 
a to the fourth times a, which is going to be a to the fifth, plus, same thing here, one third a to the fifth. And then here we plug in a for z, we get a cubed times a squared is a to the fifth, so plus one third a to the fifth. And as you can see, when we simplify that, we're just going to get a value for the mass of a to the fifth. That's the value of the mass of this volume E. Now when it comes to finding center of mass, we're actually going to need to find a coordinate point which will represent the center of mass. The way that we're going to do that is by looking for a coordinate point in each of our coordinate planes, the xy coordinate plane, the xz coordinate plane, and the yz coordinate plane. And all we do there, I'll show you how to find one of them and then the other two will be easy. Let's pretend that we're finding the coordinate point as it relates to the xy coordinate plane. We'll call this m of x sub y. This is going to be the x value of our coordinate point. But what we're going to do is just set up the triple integral again with our same limits of integration 0, 0, 0 to a, a, a. And we're going to take our density function rho of x, y, z just like we did before. But in this case, we're going to multiply it by z. You're multiplying by the variable that you don't have here. So we're going to say z because we've got x and y. The variable we're missing is z. We're going to multiply that by x squared plus y squared plus z squared like this. And then we'll have our same order of integration before where we say dx, dy, dz. Now I'll show you the first couple steps so you can get the hang of it, but all we're going to do here is distribute the z across the x squared plus y squared plus z squared. We're going to get, I'll write it above here, x squared z plus y squared z plus z cubed. So we're going to put that in instead of this value here. And then we integrate first with respect to x. So if we integrate first with respect to x, we got 0, 0 to a, a, like this. Integrating with respect to x gives us 1 third x cubed z plus x y squared z plus x z cubed. And then we evaluate that on the interval, x equals 0 to x equals a. We leave dy and dz for later. Now if we go on and we plug in these limits and then we evaluate the integral with respect to y and z and we get down to the bottom and we simplify, what we're going to find is that the value here is equal to 7 twelfths a to the sixth. I won't do all the steps because it's just the same exact steps for finding this integral as we did with the integral to find mass. It's really just integrating with respect to each integral and then plugging in 0 and a. So we get down to 7 twelfths a to the sixth. Now we would do the same thing for the other coordinate planes. So we would say the center of mass in the x, z coordinate plane is going to be equal to the integral 0, 0, 0 to a, a, a. And now here we have x and z, we're missing y. So we're going to multiply y by our density function x squared plus y squared plus z squared like this. Same thing here, dx, dy, dz. And for our third triple integral, we have xy, xz. Now the only combination of variables we're missing is yz. So we do m sub yz like this is going to be equal to the triple integral 0, 0, 0 to a, a, a. The variable we're missing here is x, so we multiply x by the density function x squared plus y squared plus z squared, and we say dx, dy, dz. So we set each of those up, we evaluate each one, and if you did that, what you would find is that for each of these triple integrals, you're going to get the same value, which is 7 twelfths a to the sixth. Now you would be done, except that you need to take each of those values and divide by the mass that we found earlier in order to find the value in the coordinate point for center of mass. So what we're going to do is we're going to take 7 twelfths a to the sixth, and let's just call that 7a to the sixth over 12, and we're going to divide that by a to the fifth. Well, of course, that's the same thing as multiplying by 1 over a to the fifth. So if we multiply there, we're going to get the a to the fifth to cancel. The a to the sixth here is going to cancel. We're just going to be left with a single a. And what we have then is just 7a over 
12. Because this is the coordinate point for m sub xy, m sub xz, and m sub yz, we follow the same process of multiplying by 1 over a to the fifth, 1 over the mass for each point, we're going to get every time 7a over 12, which means that the center of mass, so we'll say center of mass of e is going to be at the coordinate point 7a over 12, 7a over 12, 7a over 12. That's the coordinate point where the center of mass is located. Keep in mind that each of these values, this value that we found from xy, m sub xy, that's equal to what we call x bar. From xz, that's equal to y bar. And from yz, we get z bar. And then this coordinate point is x bar comma y bar comma z bar. I wanted to make sure you knew that in case your values aren't always the same. You know which value to plug into which place in this coordinate point, whether it's x, y, or z, but it's in that order. You find those three values, you plug them into the coordinate point, and that's how you find center of mass and mass of a volume like E.